Rahubat. Um, let me know your name, where you're calling from, and then your question, please. Rahubat. Well, uh, I'm here again. My name is Victor Patu. And I would, I would like to ask about the universal law. How many are there? How, how, do, how, how, how they work? Does he relate to Wusaba? He is let us know about the universal law. Tour. So you'd like to know about the universal laws and do they work? Yes. yes um, uh, I know a few of them, like uh, divine, uh, law of attraction, law of vibration. I would like to know because you have a lot of information. Yes, we do. Um, there's a book, again, called uh, The Sacred Wisdom of Tahuti, The Grand Hierophant Tahuti, Thoth. Um, when you're talking about those universal laws, first of all, we're talking about laws that govern the universe, meaning that they transcend, you know, just the lower vibrations. And in this, um, the master talks about these universal laws, because um, when you're dealing with the universe, you know, you're dealing with not just one little planet in one solar system, in one galaxy, you know, there are many galaxies and you're dealing with um, universal laws, which are things that are higher in terms of the laws of natural nature. Um, so it doesn't matter who you are, what planet you're on, um, it's relating to the, um, the universal laws. And the, the person that, you know, we're referring to as Tahuti, is the most intelligent being, and um, he's the recorder of these, these laws and this information that has been brought down to us. And, um, you know, th th this is that scroll that goes into it in great detail. Um, just trying to find, let me just find the section that I would like to maybe share with you. Um, a very, very profound doctrine. Um, I'm just about to um, find that for you, but this is probably going to be maybe the last question by the looks of things. But yeah, universal laws, universal laws. So like, for example, until I find the section, it's like saying, treat others the way you would like to be treated. You know, love others as you love yourself. That doesn't, do you know what I mean? Specify, it's not specified for a specific religion. That, those are the types of things that the true teachers, um, the true teachers, because this goes into all those beings like Konsu I was mentioning before. Um, it talks about the different deities. Um, I don't want to get distracted with that, but, you know, so Jesus would have said that, Muhammad would have said that, um, you know, most people would say the same things because it applies to everyone. Um, okay. Let me read. Um, I want to just get straight to the section that um, I want to relay. But yeah, that's what universal law deals with things that it will affect. If something affects the entire universe, it's going to affect everything inside of it. Like, the, like I said, the galaxies and the planets and the beings on the planet. Right, here we go. So, um, the nine... Tahuti doctrines are relating to what we're calling universal law. So that's the doctrine of the mental, the doctrine of correspondence, the doctrine of vibration, the doctrine of polarity, um, the doctrine of rhythm, the doctrine of cause and effect, the doctrine of gender, the doctrine of growth, and the doctrine of breathing. Now, each one of those, obviously, the number nine is very significant and always keeps coming up because we're talking about nine to the ninth um, power of nine, yeah? So each one of those doctrine is very, very profound. So um, because of time, he mentioned, um, the brother that called was mentioning one of them. So let me just read the doctrine of mental, right? It says, mind your mind for the jewels of your soul. 
This doctrine embodies the right knowledge that all is mental and such, sorry, all is mental and each has a mind. It explains that partemta, the all, which is the reality underlying all the outward and inward manifestations and appearances, seen and unseen, which we know under the terms of existence. The material existence, the ethereal existence, the phenomena of life, matter, energy, ether, and in short, all that is apparent to our material senses, one sense, subdivided into many as ka'a, spirit, ba'a, soul, khat, body, which in itself is knowable and definable, but which may be considered and thought of as a universal, infinite, living mind in the all. The third fold you, you have touched your body, felt it through your car, and accepted the way it felt with your ba'a, your soul. You see, hear, taste, smell and feel are all in kat, khat, your body. Knowing this is in ka and being able to appreciate it is ba. So ba'a is the soul and ka'a is the spirit. All these are but touch, all is, I am. It also explains that all the phenomenal world or universe is simply a mental creation in the all. Subject to the laws of created things of physical and that the universe as a whole and its parts or units has its existence in the mind of the all. As does all in which mind we live and move and have our being, persons, places and things. I, you, they, this doctrine by establishing the physical and the ethereal mental nature of all things and their physical part in the universe easily explains all of the varied mental and psychic phenomena that occupy such a large portion of the public attention and which without such explanation you end up with blind faith, false hopes and beliefs in spookism, chasing a ghost god, to an unknown and unproven place to receive gifts you are not worthy, no matter how good you pretend to be, just so you wouldn't get burnt in an eternal fire hell. Um, you made a deal with your God, all which is non-understandable and defy scientific realities, an understanding of this great Egyptian doctrine of mental in relations to mind. Each individual has a mind which is fed from the same mental reservoir, which enables each individual to readily grasp the laws of mental and to apply the same to his, her well-being and advancement. That's being in touch with a real God. The ancient Egyptian order student is enabled, sorry, yeah, it's enabled to apply intelligently and intelligently the great mental and physical laws instead of using them in a haphazard manner as religions have. With the Ankh, the master key, in your possession, the student may unlock the many doors of the mental and psychic temple of right knowledge, right wisdom and the right understanding and enter the same freely using the God mind you have or the mind of mental, which is God. This explains the true nature of energy, power, matter, existence, and why and how all these are subordinate to the mastery of mind, and that each mind is a slave to mental, the force of ether which controls the action of matter. One of the old Tahuti masters wrote long ages ago, he or she realises that all is, and these words are as true for all time. Without the ankh or the master key, Mastery is impossible and the student knocks in vain at the many doors of the temple and is met by the false teacher of ghosts, spooks, fictions, beliefs, myths, given false hopes, no facts, no truth, just lie after lie. The light is the devil's tool. Darkness is the home of God. Peace, tranquility and bliss. Find your way back to black. That's just one of them. Obviously, we've run out of time, but yes, we do deal with universal laws. We are part of the intergalactical 
community, intergalactical federation, that work together to make sure that this galaxy is maintained in that tranquility of peace. And um, obviously there are those who guard the, the universe.